what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Running Things. My name's Riley. I'm your host. I'm also the editor over at tempojournal.com. Amazing episode today. I feel like I say that every week to you guys, uh, whether it's speaking to world champions or national champions or record holders. Um, today, like, Probably the most loved man in in track and field in the U.S. and a, and a cult hero to many, someone who injects a lot of fun and personality and character into the sport. But also, as we saw at USA Nationals last July, like a heck of a racer as well and, and a competitive beast. There's a lot more to him than you probably see just off uh, his own Instagram account and, and other stuff that people share of Craig. But um, yeah, he's really a, an interesting guy as well. So. Without wasting too much of your time, let's jump into this interview with Craig Engels. All right, guys, this is the episode that everybody has been waiting for on Running Things Season 2. We are joined by the absolute one and only Craig Engels. Craig, how are you? I'm doing all right, brother. Thanks for having me on. Hey, man. it's uh, People have been asking for this one, so it should be fun. <laughs> uh, what's uh, what's going on with you? Where are you right now? I'm, uh, I'm back in Portland, Oregon. Um, I just bought a house recently and I've been renovating it. So I've been super busy with that and it's been my off season, which is nice. Um, usually I'm out somewhere on vacation, but it's not the case this year. So um, it's still been a fun off season, but yeah, I'm here in Portland and all the smoke and all the uh, bad air quality. Bought a house. Congrats. That's, uh, that's amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah. B- big steps in life. And I'd like to thank Nike <laughs> for the funding. <laughs> um, you know, I think like people will be shocked that your house isn't on wheels. You're a big RV guy. Uh, is this like, this is, feels like a real maturing, a real sort of, you know, putting down roots. What's going on there? There's a backstory to the whole house. <laughs> so I actually bought a four bed, two bath right near, um, near Nike and it has a huge backyard so I divided the lot and I'm running the house out and I'm living in the back in an RV. <laughs> hey, of course. <laughs> yeah. Should have known. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's cool. It has like a whole workshop where I can fix up RVs and, um, you know, live and grow, grow food and stuff. So yeah, the people, the people before me were growing all these um, edible plants and everything. So it's, it's a really cool setup. Sick. Um, last time I was in Portland, w- you know, I got to, we got to hang out in the, uh, the 1983 Toyota RV. Uh, but then I see recently you've, you've upgraded to a, to, to a Sprinter, a new van. Like what's going on? I cheated on my RV. <laughs> um, no, so, so it's actually very sad news is, um, last time as we were chilling in the RV and everything, you saw how cool it was. Someone wanted to buy it. <laughs> so I sold it. <laughs> I profited, uh, I profited a bit, but, um, not, I, I had, I got it tattooed on my butt right before I, I sold it. So <laughs> it'll stay with me the rest of my life. <laughs> was this just like some sort of Craig Engels super fan or something? Or like, why did they want to buy the 83 Toyota? Uh, I think it was a Toyota super fan. I, they didn't know who I was. Most people that don't run or our high school boy don't know who I am, but <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, I think they, they just wanted like a cool vintage RV as Portland as you could get, you know, <laughs> where sure. things don't um, work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the 2020 season. I mean, like crazy season for everybody. Of course mm-hmm. it goes without saying for yourself, um, raced a little bit in, uh, the big friendly series which was amazing. Uh, and then obviously dipped over to Monaco for Diamond League. What do you, what do you take from the 2020 season? Is there much that you can kind of reflect on and say, well, this worked well, this didn't work well, or is it kind of just a write-off? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like Pete or, or coaches learn more about their athletes than, well, maybe, maybe. I think my coach learned more about, my ath- more about me than I learned about myself. Um, my biggest takeaway from the whole thing is that I suck at time trials and, uh, <laughs> like, like, yeah, most of these races were like, you're going to run this and, and you're going to hit this split, at, you know, it was all, and, and I'm like, I would rather I be get out there and compete. Um, so I, I actually, it sucked because I never really got into this season mentally and, um, I never thought Monaco was going to happen. I never thought we were going to make it to Europe because I mean, who would have thought that we could somehow come from the worst COVID country in the world to get to Europe. 
<laughs> but, um, but we made it out there and I was like, dang, man, I'm, I don't know if I'm prepared. And I ran okay. Um, I was like a, a second or so off of my PB, but it, I mean, it's Monaco. So I, sh- I was like super stoked. I was hoping to break my PR by like a few seconds, but um, there's always, you know, next year I'm finally like, I think the Olympics are going to happen regardless. So, so I can buckle down and start training and take it seriously and, you know, have these goals rather than be like, I honestly don't know what's going to happen this season, but ev- everyone was going through that. So I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm just, I learned a little bit about myself through that. Hmm. It's interesting. Um, you say like, you know, I suck at time trials. It's funny. Like the last few days I've been thinking about that last, you know, the last chat we had back in, uh, probably April, 2019. And I remember talking to you then and sort of saying, Hey, you know, to make the team for Doha, these are kind of the times you need to run. Like, how do you feel about that? And I I distinctly remember you were like, I don't care. I don't care about the times. Like you can make, you can make the qualifying standard, whatever you want. I know that at USA's, whoever I line up against, I'm going to beat. like, I don't care. And you were so matter of fact. And, you know, sure enough, (laughs) fast forward to July, I was, I was trackside that day and it was like, it was pretty crappy weather. And I remember seeing like, as everybody was kind of like, you know, doing their final strides on the backside of the track, like look over at Centro and he was like game face, steely, quiet resolve. I'm, I'm certain that you were like waving to people in the crowd and smiling and laughing (laughs) and stuff. And like, sure enough, you like, you blitzed the race, like you took it, you know, all the way. Um, yeah, it's it's just all about competition for you, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like I had a little bit of overconfidence there, but <laughs> thankfully it worked out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, just like anyone else, I in this that's doing well in this sport, I love competition. Um, I, I'd rather I'd rather be good at competing than time trialing too, because then I can make Olympic finals and semi or semifinals and finals rather than you know run a three thirty and not even make it to the final. I'd rather be in that final contending for a medal than have run a fast time. And it's, it's hard to like wrap this year. It was hard to just go into every race being like, it's about time. It doesn't matter what place you get, you know? Mm. Um, you guys looked like you had some fun in Monaco as well. Have we got to touch on that? Like the, the, the uh, you know, that team vibe on the, on the yacht and everything that looks pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were in Monaco and, um, all I knew about Monaco was James Bond was filmed there. There's casinos and there's yachts. Um, and also, I guess there's a track meet every, every year. <laughs> but um, w- yeah, so, so we, we decided as a team we were going to rent a yacht. And we, we found one that was cool. Was, uh, I think it was 40 feet, which is still huge. But we, we only had to pay like $1,200 for that, which I say only, but divided by a few people, it's not bad. But um, so that was such a good day. We had such a good team team bonding like experience and we got to swim in the Mediterranean Sea and everything. But the, the next day I was just sitting in my hotel room. Um, I still hadn't adjusted the sleep schedule. So I was up at 4am and I get a text from Donovan who was up at 4am as well, inviting me on a $10,000 yacht <laughs> that I didn't have to pay for. <laughs> so I was like, ah, uh, duh. <laughs> and, and that morning we got to hop on that yacht, which was maybe like 70 feet or something insane. Wow. And, cruise around the Mediterranean with a, they had a crew of two on that one and um, a little jet ski thing. It, it, I mean, it was so cool. I couldn't have asked for like a, a cooler Monaco experience unless I had run better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> we, we published a really great feature on you late last year and I can say great because I didn't write it. Um, <laughs> uh, my man David wrote that. But it, it was a really great um, feature and kind of look at your mm-hmm. personality like below what everybody sees and thinks of you immediately. And, um, it was telling because one of the things you said was like, when you were in college, you didn't want to become a professional runner because you were like, pro runners are boring. All they do is run and watch Netflix. And like, it just looks like such a mundane kind of life. Um, you've managed to avoid that pretty well. And like, you know, whether it's through like, you know, always taking your RV out or like these trips to Monaco, you must be really pleased with the team, like whether it's Donovan or, or being coached by Pete or the other guys in the group, you must be stoked with kind of the environment you find yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. First off that, that article was my favorite article anyone's ever written about me. He was so, he was so good. And the photography was so cool. 
So you, if you haven't seen that, go check that out. But um, yeah, so my, I mean, my biggest thing with running is I didn't do it for the money and like I didn't do it for the fame. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't do running for money or fame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so I did it to have fun. And, and that's like the biggest thing you got to remember is like, you, you want to win just so you can have fun. Um, like the whole point of getting an Olympic medal for me, some people it's money, some people it's fame. The whole point of it is, is like fun and experience for me. So my biggest thing, my biggest maybe <laughs> drawback or one, one of my biggest flaws with my running and my personality is that I, I can't sit still. I can't just live a boring lifestyle in order to sacrifice for the future. Um, but that also means that like the whole time, like I'm trying to enjoy the whole process of running, you know, some people are like, Oh, I'll, I'll just like live this boring life for a few years and then I'll have fun. I'm like, how about you have fun while you're doing it? You know, I don't, it, and it's hard to balance that. And I don't think I've found the perfect formula yet. Because uh, right before Monaco, I was definitely working on my house too much or working on my van too much. And um, I was a little tired. So I, I do need to find some balance. But I mean, the whole point of it for me is to have fun. And, and that's what this team and Pete realizes. Um, and I think I think even Nike realizes that about me. So it's, it's pretty cool. And, and it's cool. Like, you you know that about me because we've got to know each other. But And, and Pete, Pete seems like, he just, he gets you or he's like the ideal coach for you, right? Like you've said before, you know, when you say, hey, you know what, Pete, I need to go and take a week and and drive to Utah or whatever. Like mm. he's giving you tips on places to check out, things to <laughs> yeah. do. Like that yeah. must, that relationship must really help when it is time to get to work on the track as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Pete's so good for me. Um, and it seems like he's good for everyone. He's coached anywhere up from the 800 to the marathon. So uh, athletically, everyone's doing all right, but also like mentally and, and he's just, he's like a mentor for everyone. Um, he cares more about how we are as a human than our, like our performances, which is really cool. Mm. But um, it's, it's also cool. To, he keeps me in check when I care more about having fun than I do about athletics, because this is, I mean, I, he, he always reminds me you only have, you know, a certain amount of years where you're going to be good at running. So I have to remember that. And he's always there to, uh, he's checks and balances for everyone. Hey, I, I want to ask um, about kind of the outdoors. Um, again, one of the things you mentioned when you spoke to to David for the Tempo article late last year was like, you're passionate about the environment and you're passionate about things like, you know, sustainable and renewable energy and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Where did where did your connection to the environment and to the outdoors come from? Is that something that your parents instilled in you when you were young or is it just because you grew up kind of, I think, North Carolina? Like, where does that come from? I wish I could say it's from running and maybe part of it is, but I honestly have no idea. Um, there was just a class in high school that was called Renewable Energy and I took it because it looked easy and I fell <laughs> in love with it. And I thought it was so cool and I couldn't stop researching after that. I was like, trying to figure out which, which renewable energies were the best and stuff. But, um, I don't know, it's, it's turned into this lifelong passion where you can help people through it. Um, you can help future generations. And like, I I really like see this world where no one sacrifices the way they're living. So some, some environmentalists want people to like sacrifice the way they're living, but I want everyone to be able to live the way they want to and use as much energy as possible, but it all comes from clean sources and we help like, you know, other species and everything. So I don't know. It, it's just this, maybe, maybe it came from running. I don't know. <laughs> we could, we could have a whole podcast on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, can we, I want to ask you about, uh, a lot of people might not know that you came down to, uh, you came down to Darwin for the Mitchell street mile a couple of years ago. Big Darwin, big Darwin yeah. fan. <laughs> and <it's>, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can we, can we just talk a little bit about, how that trip came to be, why you decided to come down to Darwin. Like, let's give the people what they want on this one. I want, I've always wanted to go to Australia since I was a kid. My, like, I've seen it on the maps. I've seen photos of it. You know, I've, I've been like, I want to go there. And it was, my season was over. I'm like, oh, there's one more race, Pete. Can I just do it? He's like, I don't care. <laughs> go do whatever you want. Your season's done. Um, so I, I flew to... To, I flew to Darwin, although it was like insane. 
Um, I had to go to Singapore, have a night layover, stay in a hostel. The hostel was closed. So I had to, I thought I was gonna have to sleep in the street, snuck into the hostel. And then I finally made it to Darwin. And I'm like, this is Australia. <laughs> I'm like, this is, where's the beaches? Where's the, where is it? Like, no one's here. <laughs> and I get there and everyone's like, yeah, it's kind of like Alabama for the United States. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't really go there as a tourist. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I, I, I had a great time. Um, I, I didn't, I got to go see crocodiles. That was like the coolest yeah. thing I got to do. <laughs> They're like 20 feet long crocodiles. And we're on this boat that's 10 feet long with three grown men. And I'm like, we're, we're going to die today. <laughs> I want to, Craig, I want to ask a little bit about the future. Something else you said in that tempo piece, and I'll, I'll read it back to you. You said, I'd like to be remembered as someone who made people happy. Happy. Hopefully I'm not remembered for running, but for something much more important. Such an inspirational quote. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it is really interesting, right? Like, um, how, do you, how do you feel that kind of mission is going? Um, I think it's going well. I, I think I try and live to that standard every day, but... Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really good question. Really deep. I'll sleep on it. And then we'll talk on a podcast in the year. <laughs> it, um, but, yeah. it is It is actually like, it is a really good message for, and, and like we talk about your fan base, but it is probably a good message for your fan base as well that, hey, like, you know, who are probably mostly um, younger, younger, younger athletes, right? Like, mm -hmm there is more to life than running. And while running might seem like it's the be all and end all right now for a lot of young people, like you're not, um, you're not just a reflection of your times. There is so much more to life than just running fast. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of, a lot of runners get caught up and it, it is kind of a selfish sport, but you gotta, everything you do in life, you just gotta make sure you're either making yourself a better person, the world, a better place or, you know, you're making ha people happy. So, um, I don't know. It, it's sometimes it's hard not to get caught up in the selfishness of, of who cares. Like it's, 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 it's about me. I don't care what other people think, you know, but you, you should care what other people think. There's kids looking up to you. Yeah. And that, that must be a strange thing, right? Like, um, especially you know, for you, you, you had obviously one college season at NC state and then transferred to Ole Miss. Like, did you ever think that okay, a few years after that, you're going to be this kind of like cult hero for like, you know, thousands and thousands of people around the world? No, <laughs> I do. I, I mean, social media is such a big thing and I really hate to talk about it like this, but I do. I remember when, when I was in college and like, uh, I got a thousand followers. I was like, this is crazy that a thousand people want to follow me and like care what I'm, <laughs> I'm doing, you know? Um, <laughs> and now I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> um, back at the start of at the start of COVID, um, you uh, you did a very Craig Engels thing and just dipped out to Hawaii. So my girlfriend and I were were going to go to Hawaii. We had been planning the trip for a while, and um, as soon as COVID hit, all the flight prices or all the flights said that you can cancel your flights um, and you get your money back. So we were like, we should, we should we get our money back. We booked all these Airbnbs. I don't know if we can get our money back for that. Um, but it turns out the flights, so if you book a flight after all that announced, it was really cheap. So we ended up canceling all of our flights and rebooking them for really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and then irresponsibly, we went to Hawaii just because we didn't really pay attention to, like, we hadn't been paying attention to any of it. And we didn't know anything yet. No one knew anything. It was, it was just this, okay, it's, it's bad, yeah, but we didn't know. So we, we find ourselves in Hawaii and spend a whole week there. And there was rumors on the island that they may shut down and have, if you're there, you're stuck there. And we were like, honestly, not bad. <laughs> We're like, but this is the most expensive place in America. It's, I don't know how long we could live here. Um, and the running would suck. So we ended up flying home for really cheap. It was like a hundred dollars. It was crazy. Um, and then we quarantined for a few days away from my roommates and her roommates. And, 
and you know nothing nothing ever went wrong but it would mean it was so cool being in hawaii during that whole time just because we had the beaches to ourselves there's no tourists although we were tourists uh, but yeah it was, it was really cool and, and it was um one of the best trips i've ever been on but it was definitely irresponsible and definitely sketchy looking back now knowing what we know yeah um hey i've got a bit of a deeper one here for you oh man like you know if you if you if you ask a lot of um track fans you know if you if you just mention the name craig engels right like everybody has something they think of which is great it's great that you're known but like everybody or a lot of people just picture you as like the mullet the mustache like the the knockabout sort of funny bloke but there's obviously you know as we saw in the tempo article and speaking to you there is obviously a great depth to your character like how how much like does does constantly trying to be Craig Engels like does that get old or is it just you know do you feel a pressure to give people what they expect to see from Craig Engels all the time do you do you feel a pressure to be on all the time this is a big this is like a big moral dilemma or question or whatever that you're asking but the Craig Engels you'd see is genuinely the Craig Engels that I am and like whatever I act like is what I am I don't fake anything so it's it's never like taxing the only taxing thing is I used to respond to every DM <laughs> and I mean, maybe like 12,000 DMs later, I've, I finally think I've stopped, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like to, to your question, I, I don't think that it's hard because this is who I am. So I don't know. Maybe there's some people out there that like have to fake it so they can be this personality and they have all these quirks, but I just did the ball to be funny and that's what it was, you know? Um, Hey, uh, Jeff, Jeff would kill me if I didn't talk about the big friendly a little bit more. Um, yes. he's immense, he's immensely proud of it and he should be, <clears throat> he and his team did a great job. Uh, what was it like having, you know, having a bunch of meets, you know, obviously you're not a big fan of time trialing, but having a bunch of meets, you know, essentially in your backyard where you guys could, could go and rip, it must've been pretty cool. Yeah, it was so sick. Um, I mean, the first two were like pilot meets, like they didn't know what was going to happen and everything. And we had to get two COVID tests before each meet, like 24 hours before and maybe 72 hours before. And it was the ones they shove down your nose and touch your brain with. Oh. So I, I think by the end uh, of the season, I ended up getting 12 or 14 of those. I, I forget which one it was, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was brutal. Um, and the first couple meets, like everyone wore their masks everywhere. And we, we all stayed like 20 feet away from each other and everything. Um, but by the end, they knew what they were doing, where they had it, they had it all down. And um, you, if, whoever you're running with in your event, you wouldn't really socialize with other people because uh, I, I don't know. They were really safe with it. And it was so good. Like the, the last meet I remember it, that I did, I think they had one more after, but it was it was like some of the best people in the world they had josh kerr racing uh sam prakel and i don't know it, it, and it felt like a real race again it, it was great uh, and i mean jeff and his team crushed it but uh, sadly actually one of the the one of the tracks that they did the the big friendly two i think it was mckinsey river mm. um it it was yeah it was um taken by one of the wildfires which sucks oh wow it was like this beautiful track right ne next to a river in the woods, and it was so cool. But these fires are just ruthless here. Yeah, um, I want to ask about. I think it was the first big friendly. Uh, you ran the eight hundred, and uh, <laughs> we asked we asked Donovan about this when he was on the show. <laughs> I think he he had instructions to take you out in like a fifty two or something. And when he was on the show, he was like, "Yeah, I." I He's like, to be honest, I thought the target was a soft target. I thought Craig was, a, you know, could go quicker. So I took him out <laughs> faster. <laughs> I'm not going to say that race ruined my season, but it definitely ruined my season. <laughs> I was sprinting all out trying to keep up with Donovan, who, who looked like he was jogging. That's what I didn't even know. I thought I was going 52 second pace <laughs> because he looked so smooth. I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 this is good. Maybe we're even slow. I think maybe this is a 55. Um, and I'm like, wow, I really can't keep up with Donovan. <laughs> I'm out of shape. He goes through in 49. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and there goes my season. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, yeah, I just remember there was a kid running a, a 600. Um, 
and he was running right behind me. And, and just at, at like 550 meters to go, he like comes up to pass me. And I'm like, how about you? Have, why didn't you run in front of me? Why didn't you? Um, and it was just and like, I'm like, why am I thinking about this during the race? <laughs> but yeah, so Donovan ruined my season. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. thought so. Um, <laughs> hey, if, uh, if we can be so selfish, I want to I ask a question about Jess Hull. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aussie's finest right now, man. Man, and she's had an incredible season. She's broken our 5,000 meter national record and just broke our 1,500 meter national record. Like, and, and obviously, she's so much closer to the start of her career than even the middle or the end of her career. Like, the, the potential on Jess is, you know, astronomical. Um, what's, it, what's it like being around Jess in training and being able to travel with her? What, what do you see um, of Jess? Yeah, Jess, this season, Jess is crushing it. Um, and the thing I'll say about Jess is Jess is the most positive person in the world. Maybe too positive. <laughs> if you hang around her too long, you're like, damn it, Jess, get mad at me for something. You're like, why are you so happy? <laughs> but she's so nice and she's so good to be around. She's always got nice stuff to say. She's positive and she, she does everything right. She listens to what Pete says and she does above and beyond what she, she should be doing. Um, so she like reminds me that that's what I'm supposed to be like when I'm this grumpy old man. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to be more like Jess where I'm having, having fun. <laughs> but she, yeah, so she, I mean, she, obviously she could break the 3K record if she broke the five, 1500 or 5K. And who knows, like, I don't know what the 800 or 10K record is, but probably at some point, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, um, she, she's so good. You guys, you guys really are like the United Nations of, uh, of track right like just this kind of eclectic mix of characters yeah it looks like we just need an aussie guy if you want to come join us <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. um is it, but like okay so i i asked our audience like a couple of days ago i was like you know submit some questions for for craig and there were two things i mean half of the questions or probably 70 percent of the questions were about the mullet so yep. I scrapped those <laughs> All the others were about like, when are we going to get a team name for Julian's joggers as you've dubbed them? Like, can't, can, can you guys just give the people what they want and pick a team name? Pete Elite, Julian's joggers, man, who, who, Pete's people, none of them, none of them really uh, stick. <laughs> so, have you guys asked, have you guys asked Pete to come up with a name? It, I think it's more so on, um, I don't know like the politics of it or anything, but we want to have like a really official group. We want it, we want it to be something like Bowerman or Oregon Track Club or Melbourne Track Club, you know. Um, so we don't want to name it after Pete. <laughs> as much as we love Pete, we don't want to name it after Pete. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if, if it was named after Pete. Um, so yeah, I guess if anyone has any really good ideas of group names. Um, they could just DM you. Oh God! Uh, DM Riley. <laughs> DM <Well>, Tempo. <laughs> we had we had uh, we had Dalila Muhammad on the show a couple of weeks ago, and she said, not to make you look bad, but she said that because she's had so much more time this year, she's committed. Basically, if you're like a young track athlete and you send her a DM about track and you're like looking for advice, she's answering all of them. Yeah. I mean, I did. I did for so long. I got burnt out. <laughs> and and um, it's actually, yeah, I posted like a political one the other day. And, and I Ooh, got- Oh, I saw that. I, I got, it was something like 750 responses. And I think I went through like 300 of them. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I can go through many more of these. <laughs> because it, I, it, what I, I like posted this political thing and all I meant by it was- don't let politics like get in the way of how you think and just be nice to other people. And then it turned into people like, but he did this and he, you know, and, and it was like, but Democrats and Republicans. And I'm like, this is literally gone so far <laughs> off of what I was talking about that I just stopped responding to him. <laughs> but basically my whole point, if anyone's listening was just be a good person and don't let other people make your choices for you. <laughs> Pretty simple stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll have to, thanks, Delilah, if you're listening and watching this, I'll have to get back on <laughs> response train. <laughs> Maybe. Um, hey, a couple more, couple more off-season questions. <clears throat> yes. And this is something we've been asking everybody. Um, 
especially in off season, let's say you, you've you've finished up on the tools for the day and you're settling in for some Netflix or whatever. What's um what's your go to snack food? Is there a is there a favorite? Okay, first off, <clears throat> the, uh, when I work, I work fifteen hour days. <laughs> I wake up, I don't, I, since I don't have to run, I wake up at seven and I work till like 11 PM. Um, and I don't, I, think, mean my, I don't think Pete wants to hear this, right? <laughs> I mean, it's better than what I usually do in my off season. <laughs> so, uh, I, I honestly like at maybe at like noon or one, I go and grab a burrito. <laughs> That's it. It doesn't I, I, like, I don't care if it's Chipotle or a food cart or a Mexican place, but I just go get a burrito, no snacks. No time for snacks. <laughs> but I, 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 it's been crazy. I think I work like 80 hour work weeks and I love it. <laughs> and your body is cool with that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I go, I go to bed at 11 and wake up at seven and it's still good, good sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, what about, what's your, I think I know the, everyone's answer is pretty much the same. What's, what's the app you use most on your phone? Tinder. Yeah, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry, my girl. I have my girlfriend. You have a girlfriend. <laughs> um, app I use. I think probably Home Depot. The Home Depot app right now, obviously. Um, I'm not obvious. I don't know why you guys would know that, but Home Depot right now. And then I guess Instagram is probably up there. Sadly, I wish it wasn't. And then yeah. um, Google Maps. I don't know why, but when I check my my time, it's always Google Maps. Hey, when you go to when you go to Home Depot, so we have the Austri- the Australian version here of Home Depot. When you go to the Australian version, it's called Bunnings. It's famous because like you can you can get a sausage and bread while you're there. Like oh. so, you like yeah. Does that do they have the same thing at Home Depot? Like you can get a hot dog out the front or something like that. Absolutely not. You can get a Monster Energy drink and a pack of M and M's. <laughs> that's all we got. But that sounds nice. That sounds more like an IKEA exper- experience to me. <laughs> so, sort of, yeah, in a funny way. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's 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 on for the rest of twenty twenty? Both from a running perspective, like obviously this off season has to end at some point, and from a from a home renovation, uh, what's what's the rest of twenty twenty hold for you? So I'm um, living alone for the first time in my life. And I did that on purpose just so that I could focus for, for Tokyo. And, um, you know, I didn't want to come home to dirty dishes and, and I, I wanted to be, I wanted this year to be all about me when, it, when I come home. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I was already supposed to start running, but the smoke here, the air quality was like 400, 500 here. So I haven't been running yet, but as soon as the air quality clears up when it's supposed to rain tomorrow, I'll start running um, and I'll be done with my house in a couple of days, which is cool. So my whole life will just be really calm in a few days, which is crazy <laughs> to think about. Wow. That's exciting in a way. Yeah. But, but then I'll probably buy an RV that I'll have to fix up. <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, any RV adventures uh, planned or? Um, we're we we're going to go to Spokane, Washington, which is where Gonzaga University is. Uh, this weekend we're gonna take the rv and head up there to get away from the smoke but i think it's smoky up there now um so i don't know i don't know i have no plans right now because all of oregon is in in flames damn it'd be cool to it'd be cool to take a trip and go help them as soon as the fires are done to go help the towns that need help and reconstructing and everything it'd be nice to volunteer some time for that what a guy um (laughs) craig Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's uh, it's it's been a lot of fun chatting to you as always, and uh, yeah, good luck with finishing off the renovations and and getting back into running. Thanks, man, and, and hopefully you guys stay safe in Australia and wherever everyone's listening. Hopefully everyone's doing well and staying mentally sane. That was great. That was so much fun chatting with Craig. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, I'll put some links in the show notes specifically to the Tempo article that um, David O wrote on Craig. I think it was late last year. I'm going to say it was like maybe October, November 2019. The interesting thing about that, Craig has said on a number of occasions that it's like the best or his favorite thing that he's seen written on him, which is which is fantastic. Um, for David, it's actually, David is a brilliant photographer based in Seattle. And I think that was actually the first proper writing assignment that David has had um, for a publication as well. And 
absolutely knocked it out of the park. So we'll share the link to that article in the show notes. We'll also share some other links on some other cool stuff that Craig has done. If you're not already, go and follow him on Instagram and uh, get, get some daily doses of RV goodness and a little bit of training mixed in as well. That is it for the show today, guys. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Appreciate you guys being with us on this little podcasting journey. My name's Riley. We'll see you next week and uh, take your easy runs easy. Thanks so much for watching Running Things here on YouTube. If you haven't already, do us a favor, hit that little subscribe button. It really helps out our channel. Also, tell your friends and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Tempo Journal.